Okay guys, here we are today in my <coughs> dingy shop, also known as the garage, with the burned out fluorescent light, so a little dark back there. But anyways, a friend of mine uh, was gifted a HP 8657A signal generator that's good up to uh, 1040 megahertz. Anyways, it was free, so my saying is if it's free, it's for me. Well, anyways, he got the generator, and I came over to uh, basically test it out for him and turned it on, and lo and behold, the display uh, lights up most of the segments, whatever, and then just freezes, just won't go through the boot-up sequence. So my standard procedure when I do that is uh, we look on the inside, make sure all the connectors are secured, uh, tight, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we did that. The connectors, I had a couple RF connectors were loose, uh, not overly loose, but just a little bit loose, but that would not affect that because basically it was, uh, feeling the power up, uh, self-test. So something was amiss. Anyways, so I got into it and did a visual inspection. Like I say, I start with that. And here's what I found on cursory looks. See if I can reverse the camera. Well, the first thing I noticed just out of the corner of my eye was this little backup battery that's in there. And I don't know if you notice, but on the one side there, you see some green goo or gunk or corrosion, whatever you want to call it. So I'm like, well, that's not good. That seems like that battery has leaked something out from internally. So then I was got to looking a little closer, and that battery goes on the board uh, basically right in this area here and the edge of it was almost touching the socket for this chip which just happens to say ROM that's random act or ran or read only memory sorry not random read only memory well that's part of your boot up sequence the program to initialize everything and whatnot and at that time I noticed that two of the pins here had some corrosion on it, so I thought, well, I'm going to see if I can clean those up. Maybe there's a bad connection in there. So I proceeded to take this chip out, and when I came, or got it out, two pins right here were non-existent. And looking down in the socket, I could see the rusty corrosion and whatever, and the pins broke off. But it left the little, the wide parts still attached there. So basically what I did is I ran... Two little enameled wires soldered them right to the stubs that were sticking out and then it goes to the board and down through this crack in here to the other side and I soldered the other ends of these wires to the circuit pads where those two pins would normally be and the reason I did that I originally was going to you know uh, try to get those bad pins out and unsolder the from the back side of the board and whatnot but these HPs they use a process called HAL I forget what it stands for exactly, but these traces are very sensitive to heat. Uh, if you apply more than 600 degrees for more than three seconds, it lifts the trace and the pads off. So rather than damage the board, that's why I went with this route. I just ran the jumper wires. Uh, there's no RF on that. It's just, uh, you know, reading the ROM. So it's uh, basically TTL or CMOS levels, uh, DC for the most part, uh, anyways so having these long leads on there doesn't hurt anything so anyways when I got that all connected up and turned it on um, now the unit is upside down so I can show you that side of the board but but if we power it up which we can't do because <laughs> I unplugged it before I go sticking my hands in there so sorry about that but anyways um, that backup battery as near as I can tell from the service manual is only to save the features how you have it programmed you know the output power the output frequency if you unplug it from the wall well if, to me it's a small price to pay when if you do that and you turn it on it automatically defaults to 100 megahertz at minus 143.5 dbm so uh, being it's got a keypad uh, entry just type in your frequency and amplitude you want you're good to go so rather than risk this battery further leaking and doing more damage i just took it out of the circuit unit seems to work fine so anyways there you have it uh hp 8657a 
very nice unit a typical hp quality build uh so uh, if you find one of these on ebay or or whatnot uh they're they're pretty easy to work on the service manual is available online as well as the user manual uh, they seem to work very well and uh, I, uh, disclosure i'm an hp test equipment geek i love hp test equipment uh i have uh quite a bit of my own I've got the uh uh um, one of my favorites the old 8640b but i got the military in the can equivalent version of it but it's basically the same and then for my microwave work i've got this uh hp 5342a it's a freak counter and power meter built into one it's got the option for the power meter and i've got an hp 431 uh and stuff like that anyways uh they they make uh, great test equipment so and uh, the user manuals are user friendly that if you have any technical inkling you can probably get it down to a part yeah, whatever. Now, finding parts, if you need to, to buy some, uh, well, like in this case, the ROM chip, uh, you know, it's got the program in it for initializing it and whatever else it needs to do, the keyboard reading. Uh, you're not going to find that on eBay, at least not programmed up for this unit. So uh, that's why I, I had to make that one work. And like I say, the uh, enameled wire in there uh, did just that, brought it back to life. So uh, another one saved from the scrapyard. So anyways, enjoy guys. Appreciate it. Uh, taking time to watch.